Hey there guys, so I decided to do a bit of a video on the changes here in Australia with amateur radio. Now when I say changes, these happened actually quite a long time ago now. These changes were made over a year ago to the way that amateur radio licenses and call signs and exams were uh, given out or how they were conducted here in Australia. Basically, the ACMA now do everything and they have all of the information available on their website. But the most common question that I get asked all the time is, well, what do I pay now? How do I renew? I'm not getting renewal notices anymore. I don't know where my call sign is. It's fallen into the ether, all of those sort of questions. So in this video, I wanted to just show you the process that you need to go through in order to register and to renew your call sign because you still need to renew your call sign. You have to renew it at least every five years. Um, you don't need to pay a license fee anymore, but you still need to renew your call sign. Now, what ha will happen is, is that if you don't do these steps, then what will happen is in five years time, your call sign will be up for renewal. You won't receive any notification about it. They don't send paper uh, letters anymore with renewals. So you're not going to know, basically, unless you follow these processes and you have everything sorted out from an administrative side to be able to renew. Now, as I mentioned, the ACMA website is the go-to place for you. Now, I'm going to put all the links in the description below, but you can go basically to the ACMA website here and if you go up here to the little search bar and you put in amateur radio, if you can spell it correctly, like I evidently can't, amateur radio, you've got all of uh, these different search results here. Let's just go to amateur radio. And this will take you here to uh, a couple of search results. So let's just go to the generic amateur radio page. And this has all of the information available to do with amateur radio licenses, including the qualifications you need, the resources, the operating procedures, um, if you're overseas visiting, if you want call signs, um, all to do with the new class license, everything like that. So all of the information is available here. Now, a couple of things that I recommend you do um, before you go into the next portion of this video is here, the amateur radio newsletter. If you actually open this up, you can put in here your details and you can ask to receive updates to do with all sorts of different things that the ACMA look after. Now, one of the things here is amateur radio. So you can tick that, you can subscribe to it and they will send you updates when they come out of any changes to the amateur radio uh, service. So that way you're always informed and I recommend that you do that. Now, uh, as far as call signs are concerned, that's the next thing that we were going to deal with. That's probably the most uh, asked question about amateur radio call signs because you used to be able to go into the ACMA database and look up a person's call sign. You could see their name, you could see their address, uh, you could see when it was issued and how long it's issued for. All of that has changed. If you go to amateur radio call signs down here at the bottom, and open this up. This has all of the information regarding uh, call signs, the fees that you pay when you get a call sign. So you don't need to pay for renewal. You only pay when you pass an exam and you only pay for the allocation of a call sign. So all of that is listed in here. There is an, there is an online call register. It's very basic. You can see here that you can uh, search this call sign register by the prefix, the availability, the location. You can see here that there's also contest calls in here and you can apply for these call signs too. So if we go in here and we search for my call sign, you can see here that it says that it is assigned to advanced. So that's all that you can see now. You can't see uh, their name, you can't see anything like that. So you're going to have to rely on qrz.com or you know those kind of lookup services to be able to uh, view information about a person with a call sign. Now, if you've just got your amateur radio license and you want people to be able to contact you, email you and all that sort of thing, then qrz.com is pretty much the place where everyone sort of goes to. qrz.com here, register for that website um, and then you can fill out your um, call sign information. So if I look myself up here, QRZ, here's a little bit of a bio that I've filled out. So you can sort of fill out this information and people can look you up. Uh, if you don't want to, then that's completely fine too. You don't have to do that. But you can't rely on the ACMA's uh, 
call sign database now to look up that information. Okay, now the next question is, well, how do I renew my stuff? Uh, what, what do I need to do? Well, you need to go to the ACMA Assist portal. So there's a button up here, ACMA Assist. You can Google it. Again, there'll be a link in the description below. This is where you register an account. And then what will happen is, is that you can tie your amateur radio call signs to your account. Now, uh, if I just log in here and I can show you, You'll have to continue, uh, register an account with a digital ID. If you don't have an account, just click sign up now and you can enter your email address and create a password and verify yourself with a digital ID. It's all very straightforward. Just follow the steps and the processes that it gets you to go through. And then once you create an account, log in. So I'm just going to log into my portal and show you what it looks like or what it's supposed to look like. Once you log in, this is what you should see. Okay, not everyone actually sees this and this is where a lot of the problems come into it. Uh, once you've registered in the ACMA Assist, you should have an amateur radio tab and you'll have these other tabs here. The first thing that I would encourage you to do is to go into your client information and update all of your details, update your address, update your email and all that sort of thing. Make sure that they're all up to date. And then uh, if some people will have an amateur radio tab, other people will probably find that they don't have an amateur radio tab. And the reason being is because uh, a lot of it has to do with the email address that you've had previously with the ACMA. If that has changed or it's an alternative email address, they may not have tied your email address to your call sign or to your amateur radio call sign that you had previously. So if that is missing, what you can do is you can email info at acma.gov and uh, .gov.au, I think it is. And then what you can do is you can say to them, hey, I don't have the amateur radio tab and give them as much information as possible, all right? So give them your name, your address, give them any previous email addresses that you may have had, uh, give them your client ID number if you knew it, your exam result number uh, if you've got it or any exam result information, um, as much detail as you can give them to say, this is me, this is the call sign that I used to have and I don't have the amateur radio tab in my account. Uh, this is my email address from my ACMA assist account and then they should be able to add it for you. And I think that leads to a lot of confusion. But if we go into here and we click manage on amateur radio, in here you can see uh, the list of call signs. So I've got two call signs on in here. I've got VK7HH and VK7HA. And you can see here the dates of when they expire or when you need to confirm them by. Um, here you can uh, reconfirm, you can surrender or you can transfer them. Um, you can click on contact details here and make sure that all of your contact details are correct as well. Again, update all of these. Um, you can go back into the call sign register and you can apply for another call sign um, if it's free and you can uh, pay for that and then they will appear here in this portal. Um, you'll have a list of completed examinations. So here's my examination here for my advanced level that's been issued. So uh, the ACMA will have on file your examination uh, numbers and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I said if you don't have this tab, if you provide all that information, they can then cross-reference it and look it all up. Now uh, I can click reconfirm here and that should reconfirm my call sign status so mine's good until 2029 so I've got another four years left so I can click reconfirm if I wanted to now to reconfirm another five years um, or uh, but I'm, I'm good with what it is at the moment uh, if you do have the amateur radio tab and you are missing a call sign that you're supposed to have you can click locate missing call sign um, here you can enter the email address you previously used for your ACMA records we need to send a code to this email to address to verify it. So you might have this amateur radio tab, but you've got no call signs listed. If you click on that, enter in the previous email address that you believe you used, it can then cross-reference it and put your call sign in here. But again, with anything, if you uh, come up against any problems and you can't find your call signs or you don't have the amateur radio tab, then all you need to do is just go in to the amateur radio page and here it is, info at acma.gov.au. Uh, 
uh, gov.au and just say to them, hey, I can't uh, view my account in the tab, uh, in the account. Uh, I don't have the amateur radio tab and uh, just give them as much information as possible. So this is very critical to do this so that you can make sure that you don't have uh, any call signs all of a sudden just fall into the ether and you forget about them and then all of a sudden you realise that in five years' time um, you go to renew and they get cancelled and, so and then all of a sudden you might hear someone else is using your call sign on the air because they've gone and got it because it's available. So, you know, there's all sorts of problems that could happen but if you follow these processes then you can get hold of your um, your call sign and, and get it into your ACMA uh, account as well. For those who might have let their uh, license lapse and they haven't renewed it um, in a while or they're interested in getting back into amateur radio then you don't need to sit an exam again all you need to do is just provide the ACMA evidence that you once held an amateur radio license um, if you provide your exam results that's probably the best way forward the exam results from the WIA or AMC or whoever you went through should have a license number on there or sorry exam number Give that to the ACMA via that email address and just say to them, hey, I was once an amateur radio operator um, and I'm interested in getting my license again. And then all you need to do is just provide that. So I hope that that kind of helps a little bit and I hope that I wasn't too confusing. If you've got any questions, then drop them below. If anyone has any problems with being able to get access to the ACMA Assist portal or anything like that, share them this video and just say, hey, check this out. Have you done these steps first? See if you can get in. Last resort, email the ACMA and just say to them, hey, um, you know, I'm having some issues logging in. This is my email address, all my details and just provide all that and they'll be able to assist. I've done this with a couple of other amateurs who have had some issues before and they've managed to get into the system and they're all up and running now. So again, just make sure as well, if you do have an account, all of your details are up to date and correct. Now, if you wanna learn more about amateur radio in Australia and how to get your license, then we've done a few videos on that. It's a reasonably easy process these days now with no exam fees, that's one key thing. We've done those videos, check them out over here if you're interested.